glad to have you back for the second in this two-part video clip. We're going to finish up the problem now of doing a load shear moment diagram for a beam with a non-constant distributed load. Remember this was inspired by the wing of a small airplane. Right, so we're, right now we've got the reaction force at the root. We've got the reaction force where the strut hooks on. These are the vertical components. There are horizontal components. And we know the, uh, just the height of the distributed load across here. Now I've divided these into sections one, two, and three because the, the load shear moment diagram is now going to have three segments in it. Right, to, in order to do the, lo the shear part of the diagram, this is the easy part, all we've got to do is we've got to look at how load accumulates, shear force accumulates as you go from the left to the right on the beam. So I'm just going to do what, the, what this drawing tells me to do. I'm going to start by going to positive 2404.8. That's the uh, rea vertical reaction force at the root. Okay, so I'll start there. Now I'm going to accumulate some load as I go across. And the load I accumulate as I go across is just the uh, area of that rectangle right there. I know the height of the rectangle is 19.048, and I know the base is uh, 24 inches. So you multiply those two numbers together, base times height equals area of a rectangle. Last I checked, you get 457.15. Uh, I've got my notes down here, so sorry, I have to keep looking at those. I, I can't remember all these numbers off the top of my head. Okay, and that's going to come up here and look like that. I'm going to accumulate that much and get to here. Now, it's important to note that since the height is constant there, the rate at which I accumulate load never changes. That means I'm going to have a constant slope there. Constant height, constant slope. All right? And if I want to find the change in height, I've got to find area. Now. As soon as I'm sitting here going change in height, slope, area, stuff like that, you know there's calculus all over this, and of course there is. I'm going once I know the function of this this uh, load here, I can integrate this to get to, to load or to shear, and I can integrate shear to get to moment. And we'll do that here in a minute. But what I want to do right now is I want to sketch this in just by eyeball, so we know what it's supposed to look like before we start trying to assign numbers to it. Okay, so I'm up to here, and that height right there is uh, 2861.9, make sure I got that, 2861.9, okay, that, that many pounds of shear force have accumulated from here to here, um, including that, and now I'm going to go down 404.8, down here, so I'm going to just account for that load, that's a discontinuous chain, so I'm going to go down to there, and that turns out to be minus 1542.8. Right. Now, I've got the same height over here, so I'm going to accumulate shear force at the same rate as I did before. So that slope is going to equal that slope. Now, I'm trying to do this to scale. I may not quite get it right. That, that's supposed to be the same slope. I think I got it pretty close. And uh, here I wind up, eh, let's see how many, I'm just going to put an arrow in there. That turns out to be minus 285.7. Okay? So there's how much shear force I've got left. Now, I accumulate some more, but I don't accumulate it in a constant way. The slope here starts positive and goes to zero. So that, I'm sorry, the height here starts positive and goes to zero. That means the slope here is going to start positive and go to zero. And that's going to look like a little parabola. You know, that's a zero order, it's a constant. So this is a first order, a straight line. This is a first order, a straight line, so it becomes a second order, a parabola. Eventually it's going to be a third order down here. These start out at first order, and they're going to be second order down here. Okay, so let's sketch in the moment diagram. There's no uh, fixed moment, no unit moment at the uh, or concentrated moment, I should say, at the uh, root there because it is a pin joint. Okay? That's the definition of a pin joint. Make sure you can see it here. Okay, you're good. It's the definition of a pin joint. So I'm going to start at zero moment there and I'm going to find out the area of that trapezoid right here, and that's the change in height. And that's going to turn out like that. Okay. Now notice this did not start out at zero slope there because that didn't start out at zero height. I started out at a positive slope and got to a bigger positive slope. Positive slope, bigger positive slope. Now, run the numbers, you figure out the area. This is 63201, I think. And that's in inch pounds because we're working in English units. And now here I'm going to start out at a big negative number and go to a less negative number. Okay, so big negative number for slope and go to a less negative number. All right, so I'm going to wind up a large negative slope going to a less negative slope, but not zero. 
here I start out at that same slope and I really do go to zero. So this is going to look like that. Okay, and that number right there is 2859.6. Right, and that's again in inch pounds. So we've got this sketched out. We know what it's going to look like, but I don't actually know what the functions of that the moment curve look like. If I wanted to calculate stress along the beam, I'd actually have to know the equation for moment in area 1, moment in area 2, and moment in area 3. I do know the maximum, and that may be enough for a lot of problems, but let's go ahead and figure out M1 and M2 and M3. Okay, if I'm going to do that, I've got to start by integrating, right? Let's start up here. I'll, I'll write an expression for load 1, load 2, and load 3, and then I'll integrate them. Well, load 1 and load 2 are the same, and those are just constants. Okay? So lo load 1, I'm sorry, shear 1, is going to be the integral of this. Okay, so that's easy. Integral of 19.048 dx from 0 to x. Now, x in the upper limit, okay? I want this to be a function, not a number, so I'm going to make it x in the upper limit. It, this is valid from x equals 0 to x equals 24. And I also have to include that initial uh, shear right there. I, I've got to include that, so that's 2404.8. And what I'm going to get for this is, I'm going to work this out. Let's see why I can, good lord, I should be able to just look at that, shouldn't I? Okay, there. So there's the expression for S1. For S2, okay, now I've got the integral from 24 to x. All right, got to, got to make sure I have the right integration limits here. Uh, let's see, dx plus, now I have to have a new, uh, new endpoint right there, a new offset at the end. And that's going to be minus 1542.8. We'll integrate this out. Okay, again, just do what the math tells you to do. You'll get the right answer. And you get 19.048x minus 2000. Okay, that's no surprise. The area there is 2000, so it shouldn't be too surprised if a 2000 shows up somewhere. And there you have it. So those are the first two. So I've got. S1, S2, those are straight lines. That's a straight line, that's a straight line. Now I've got to make a parabola. So let me erase this. Okay. And now I've got to do S3 equals an integral from 90 to x of L1. Well, or L3, I should say. What's L3? L3 should see mx plus b. Last I checked, that's the, that's the equation for a straight line, right? Well, the slope is minus, let's see, 19.048 over 30. Right? That's the change in height, and that's the change in length. x plus b. Well, here's the deal. The b is, that's the y-intercept. The y-intercept is way the heck over there somewhere. Well, I don't know, that's not that helpful. Um, I could figure it out, but I don't want to. Here's an easier way to do it. Okay, 19.048, I can use the, the y-intercept there. If I fake it out a little bit, if I put x minus 90 in there, so that start that uh, shifts the whole curve, so it, uh, I'm defining the line starting there. All right, work that out. And let's see, you get, let's see, make sure I say this right, um, minus zero point. Let's see, 63493x plus 76.192, okay? Now that's not at all intuitive. I never would have guessed just by looking at it, that's what the equation of that line was, but that's what it is. Okay, minus 0.63493x plus 76.192dx, but I've got to have the offset right uh, there. So I've got to have that minus 286 point, or 285.7. Okay. All right. Now, 
when you work through this problem, if you don't get to all the way right to the very zero at the end, where the, the shear and the moment are supposed to be zero, if it comes out a very small number, that's just a uh, uh, round off error. Okay, don't let that fool you or worry you too much. And you work that out and you get minus 0 0.31745x squared plus 76.192x minus 4571.5. That's what I got. Now, when it's time to do the moment, you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to take these shear expressions and integrate them in the exact same way. Okay, now let's do the moment. All right, so we've got the moment in uh, section one is just the integral of shear in section one from zero to x. And remember again, x we want this. We don't want this to be a number. We want it to be a function of x. So we're going to leave x in the as the upper limit, and we know what this is: one nine o four a x plus two four o four point eight dx. Okay, integrate that all out, and you get let's see. 9.524x plus 2404.8x, I'm sorry, x squared. Okay, that sure looks like a parabola. And if we plug in uh, x equals 24, we're going to get that number right there, 63201. All right, so that's m1. Now let's do m2, same way. Okay, m2. 2 is going to be the integral from 24 to x. Now we're going to go from here to here, and again, x in the upper limit, because we don't want a number, we want a function. All right, and we're going to write down the uh, same expression we had for shear in that area. So it's 19.048x minus 2000 dx, but now we have an offset to deal with here. So we're going to go plus 63201, okay? We've got to make sure we start at the right point here, because this is just the, the amount of uh, shear force that accumulates, and that's where we start. Now grind all that out, and you get 9.524x squared minus 2000x plus 10571.5.2. Okay, now this is where we're going to start uh, uh, perhaps accumulating a little bit of round off error. If we don't go all the way, don't make quite all the way to the uh, zero there or zero there, that might be just because we're not carrying enough significant figures through. If we get to the end or if you get to the end and you come up with uh, you know, a pound, inch pound or uh, some small number there, it's probably just round off error. Okay, so there's M2. Let's do M3, and then we'll be done. This long, long problem. All right, M3 okay, is the integral from 90 to x, because again, we want to go from that point to that point, and we want x to be, we want this to be a function, not a number, so x in the, is the upper limit, and now we're integrating a parabola. So let me write this bad boy out here, 76.192. Uh, oops, I got wrong, wrong order here. Uh, minus 0 0.31745x squared uh, plus 76.192x minus 4571.5. And that's all got a dx there. I'm almost running out of room. And now I've still got that little offset, so I've got to account for that. And that's going to be plus 2859.6. Okay, that's the last thing. I'm going to have to grind this out just for reasons of good form. So bear with me here. This turns out to be minus 0.10582x cubed plus 38.096x squared Ugh, minus 4.5. 71.5x plus 182857. Wowie. So there you have it. That's the expression for that little curved part there. Remember we went from first order, second order, third order. There's our third order curve. Now we're done. So there's the load shear moment diagram. One more thing to remember, if you decide to calculate the bending, or I'm sorry, the normal stress between uh, 0 and 24 inches, you got to remember there's also an axial stress in there. So you have because the uh, uh, resultant force from the strut was that way and the reaction force was that way, there is going to be an, an axial stress 
uh, normal stress superimposed over the bending stress. Okay, so you have to add that in. Right? There you have it. Thanks for sticking with me. <laughs>